eclipses are dramatic wild cards of our horoscope the universe uses eclipses as a tools to get us moving some of our lives became stagnant and there is high time to change we are very reluctant to change we don't even think about needing that that there's going to be a great need for change eclipses they come around they approach us they surprise us they have this element of i never seen that coming not in a hundred million years and they get us moving hello hello astrology lovers and welcome back to my channel my name is ildiko thank you so much for joining me today where i'm going to walk you through the astrology of may and i'm going to break it down to all 12 signs uh, after introducing the main aspect of the month for you. Mm. I always suggest uh, to watch this video primarily for your rising sign because this is the one that gives you the more precise prediction but secondarily you may also watch it for your sun sign uh, which especially if you were born during the day or watch it for your moon sign which is a more internal manifestation but it's especially is important if you were born during the night time so without further ado let's jump right into it so the majority of may sun is going to be still in the sign of taurus this is the season when we enjoy the flowers and the beauty and nature at least up here in the northern hemisphere and then on the 21st of may sun is going to move into gemini the Gemini season is coming up after that. Now, Venus on the second is going to move into Aries. And uh, that means that we kind of going to crave passion. And, uh, you know, we are going to be very active in our love life and prob probably social life as well. Now, on the 10th of May, however, Mercury is going to go retrograde in his own sign, in the sign of Gemini. Now, Bur Mercury being retrograde in his own sign will definitely cause all sorts of communication problems. Misunderstandings and gossips are highly likely, as well as difficulties in learning, processing information, transportation, etc. We are going to need to re- think, relearn, and rewrite uh, the ways we express our thoughts. Up until now, since uh, there were some mistakes done in the past, and now this is the time to make amends and fix those mistakes, uh, those issues. So we can move uh, with a more purposeful way, a more uh, a clearer way of communication, speaking, and liaising uh, with others after the retrograde period uh, will have finished. Uh, beside the communication problems, usually there are problems with regard to transportation, and travels and trips and so you want to make sure that before you go on a trip at least you know double check make sure that your car was serviced because all sorts of mishaps are happening during the mercury retrograde season when i remember when um, at one point when i didn't do that in a mercury retrograde season and we got stuck on the motorway and i thought we're never going to get home uh you know the car had to be towed home wow. Also, IT uh, devices can then can go funny, you know, so make sure you have backups for your computer, make sure that, you know, if you can postpone that, you know, that new device, um, buying that new device, because um, it's just... Um, you know, things can go wrong. Now, paperwork can be delayed, and that's true with regards to travel plans as well. So they could be delayed as well. And it's also highly suggested not to sign any paperwork during the Mercury retrograde season. But often the case is that they are so delayed that even if you wanted to, you may not be able to. Now, Mercury is going to go Kazemi on the 21st, and that's a very important day when uh, Mercury spends a couple of hours in the heart of the sun. And this is a very important time to receive or maybe ask for a message. And I'm going to tell you when I get to uh, all 12 signs uh, to your sign, when is it going to happen? But you need to convert it to your time zone. 
Now, after that, Mercury is going to move back to Taurus, and that is the sign of, you know, the material things, money, security. And so, um, you know, Mercury was retrograde in Taurus because, again, there were some issues with regards to, you know, finances. Uh, did you value the money you, you spend your money on? There's going to be some tough questions with regard to finances asked. Frivolous spenders, you know, may have a rude awakening. However, this is going to be the right opportunity to review your budget. And this time is, you know, could be inspirational to spend uh, on more sustainable ways in the future. Now, the next uh, big thing that is going to happen is going to be uh, Jupiter on the 11th. Jupiter is going to move into Aries. And so it looks like, uh, you know, Jupiter in Pisces season is over. And it's true, it's going to be over. Mainly it's going to be over. Jupiter is going to move back to, Air, uh, to Pisces um, towards the end of the year, maybe just for a short months. But yes, uh, the majority of the year, Jupiter now is going to leave Pisces for good. Now, Jupiter in Aries is not too bad, however, so we don't have to be too sad. <laughs> Jupiter in Aries uh, actually feels quite okay because Jupiter is also a fiery planet, rules a fire sign, Sagittarius, we know. And so Jupiter does actually quite well in fire signs, which is Aries. Now, for some of you who don't know, Jupiter is the planet of luck, abundance, and wisdom, and higher knowledge, long distance travel as well. And so primarily, it's obviously is going to favor everybody who, who was born um, in Aries, a zodiac sign, you know, Aries sun sign, but uh, it's going to be also good for Aries moon and Aries rising as well. Now, in the collective, it is going to um, be that humans are going to experience luck and growth and opportunity if only if they tune in to their leadership abilities, uh, their initiating abilities, their courageous and enthusiastic abilities. Yeah. All of us can do that. In fact, we are going to have to do that. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be more pioneering and we're going to be um, able to begin new exciting endeavors where bravery and le leadership is going to take precedence over waiting around and seeing what's going to happen. No, Aries is nothing about waiting around. Aries is actually, we know how impatient sign it is and how action-oriented sign it is. So if we take, you know, that Aries spirit a little bit, that means, you know, we are going to attract our fortune. Uh, so we need to lead, we need to initiate, inspire others and demonstrate enthusiasm and courage in order to take the most benefit that Jupiter is going to be able to give. So you have to have faith in yourself. And so for the whole season, as I usually do, I also give you a mantra. And this is uh, going to be this one for the whole entire year for everybody. I believe life is what I make of it. I believe life is what I make of it. And that's going to be your mantra whilst Jupiter is in Aries. Now on the 16th of the month, we are going to have a total blood moon lunar eclipse. And that is going to be the strongest of all eclipses we are in the eclipse season. When I'm making the video, I'm still waiting for uh, the solar eclipse in Taurus, which is going to happen uh, on the 30th of this month. And then so we know that each solar eclipse is followed by a lunar eclipse two weeks later, and that is going to be um, the the total blood moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And that's the one I'm going to talk about now because I'm talking about May astrology. If you want to know about the solar eclipse, it's still in my April video. You can scroll back down and watch it. So this solar eclipse, as I said, is going to be very, very strong, but obviously not everybody is affected. So again, what you need to do, you need to go um, find that link 
uh, cast your chart and see whether or not you have important points and planets on the 25th degree of Scorpio, Taurus, and perhaps also Leo and Aquarius, because these are the fixed signs and these are going to be the most affected by the eclipse. Give it, give or take, you know, three minute orb. So this is going to be a rather emotional lunar eclipse, you know, and it's going to put us into a somber and, you know, a little bit of painful mood as well. So lunar eclipses are usually the time of letting go. And so, uh, you know, we are going to come into some fated endings in terms of in matters of sexuality, intimacy, the hidden and, uh, you know, with regards to uh, other people's money, such as maybe investments or taxes, inheritances, you know, these sorts of things. Saturn is going to square both of the luminaries coming into a so-called T square configuration. And um, we don't usually like Saturnian squares, uh, especially not to the luminaries. They kind of very difficult, you know, they bring up difficulties, they bring up karmic lessons, you know, there's a lesson to be learned here. And so that is going to happen during this uh, full moon uh, lunar eclipse. And the Saturn square also will put us into another, will give us another sense of karma and fatedness, you know, when there is not much you can do. But it, at its best is going to put us into a dark mood where we feel like we are called out for some sort of past mistakes that we have done especially with regards to authority figures and this could put us into some sort of you know a bit of depressive mood as well the ruler of the lunar eclipse is going to be mars because uh, it's a scorpio eclipse and so the mars is going to be exactly on the same degree as um, the jupiter and neptune conjunction occurred on the 12th of April. If you haven't seen that video of mine, it is still not too late, please, I put a link up there, go back and check that video because it's very, very important in order to understand uh, how you have come to this moment. So uh, now Mars is touching the degree of um, Jupiter and Saturn square. So that is going to be uh, how interesting that this is actually happening on the day of this full moon blood moon total lunar eclipse that's going to give us a feeling of a fatedness however mars and neptune are conjoined uh, during this eclipse and this can give us this paranoid delusion and we are already in the somber mood because of that saturn and because of the stress of this lunar eclipse it is very important however that you don't lose your faith you know, you will feel the, uh, the confusion uh, in this solar eclipse energy. You know, you may feel as, uh, you know, you're wearing a blindfold and you don't know where you had it, what action you should be taking, you know, that you are going to lack sense of direction. Mm -hmm. and you feel that you, you need to surrender your control over what is unfolding. Now, if you are very scared easily, you need to take precautions, okay? Because this is extremely, extremely important that this is the time and you shouldn't lose your faith. Uh, you know, if you are self-confident and consider yourself self-aware, then this could be the time when you are taking your first action in order to reach that goal, uh, that dream that uh, you have you have created during that jupiter natural conjunction, so throughout the months of April, okay? Uh, it's very important that you don't fall into this fear and this delusion, this paranoia, you know, you have to consciously choose and leave a higher manifestation of this conjunction. And it's going to be difficult during this um, lunar eclipse because of, you know, the Saturn square, because of the, um, overall stress of the lunar eclipse so it's going to be not easy to keep your faith but you're going to have to do it you know uh you know you have to keep your enthusiasm to chase your dream under 
any circumstance. You have to keep on your enthusiasm to follow your spiritual goals. Now, maybe put your energy into charitable, um, charitable and human rights work as well. Maybe put your energy into healing the sick uh, because that can happen as well but more entirely put your energy to keep on chasing that dream and and not to lose that faith that you have already uh, you know initiated uh, during the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction as I said for uh, for you to understand what I'm talking about you need to watch that video the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction uh, you know how to manifest your dream. Now, during the solar eclipse, uh, Chiron is and Venus are going to be conjoined as well. And that this will definitely suggest that uh, there's going to be some pain and healings in matters of heart or in matters of emotion and also in matters of money and value. Now, Chiron will not give you the magic magic heal that uh, to heal what's broken but it will show you how to love and and you know how to start loving for real uh, it may not be easy but it will worth it you need to face your pain because Chiron it will bring up everything now and that and um, also the lunar eclipse in Scorpio can bring up some long buried issues you know like lunar eclipse they usually reveal something to us so something uh, that you that it was long buried now it could come up you know the good the bad the ugly everything and you're gonna have to face it and you're gonna have to deal with it because these wounds they need to be healed but that's never an easy process right if you keep on ignoring your hurt um, that's not going to be an option okay because you know you need to directly confront your feelings even if it hurts um so your mantra actually for this um for the lunar eclipse it should be uh, you need to face it until you make it you need to face your negative emotions so it doesn't take control over your life eclipses are dramatic wild cards of our horoscope the, the universe uses eclipses as uh, tools to get us moving to show us that uh some of our lives became stagnant and there is high time to change. And these are usually um, areas that we are very reluctant to change or we don't even think about, uh, think about needing that, that there's going to be a great need for change. Uh, so because of that, uh, you know, eclipses, they come around, they approach us, they surprise us. Uh, they have this element of, uh, you know, you could, I never seen that coming not in a hundred million years and they get us moving they shake us out of our feeling of compliancy because we have reached a level of maturation where we need to step up to a different level to a higher level of maturation now eclipses they work very rapidly they want us to change and change during the eclipses are inevitable now, on the 30th of the month is going to be an amazing new moon in Gemini. And I mean, <laughs> I just love astrology that every month there is an amazing constellation in the sky. Like last month, it was the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction. And May, I think, if we survive <laughs> that lunar eclipse, which of course we will, uh, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be painful. But then we have got this beautiful new moon in Gemini to look forward to. Now, the new moon in Gemini is going to conjunct exactly the degree of, uh, of the fixed star Aldebaran. And that's a biggie and that's very fortunate guys and I'm going to talk about that when I get to each sign. Taurus. Taurus you're going to experience fated endings and also new beginnings through self-development during this month. Sun is going to be in your first house the 
almost the majority of the months. And this is a time of rebirth of the self when sun illuminates your first house of, you know, your physical appearance. Uh, you are going to be shining and you are going to be noticed. Uh, your self-expression will come to forefront now. This marks the height of your physical solar cycle and you are in the position to make impression on others as well. You can assert yourself, your personal influence beyond its normal boundaries. Now, spontaneity of expression is this what this transit all about. Now, you are ready to put your past behind you and start a brand new personal yearly cycle you know your presence you have this presence that everybody just notices you uh, you don't even have to do much you don't have to be allowed you just going to be noticed and uh, of course this is because of your increased solar energies that comes into your first house of you know a self-appearance and physical body um this is the good time to get in touch with your you know sense of identity and sense of purpose as well the spotlight is as i said is definitely definitely going to be on you and so make it a good one all right uh, take steps to um improve how you come across to others all right so don't be overbearing uh, but it is definitely it's the time to carve your own new brand new life path for the next uh, solar year you know, venus moves into your 12th house in the second of may and then that means that you know a sort of a hibernation uh, and private privacy sector um where venus is going to be and venus is your ruler planet so uh this is going to play out a little bit you know <laughs> interestingly because your ruler planet venus is in the 12th house so you will need some sort of beside this shining you will need to keep yourself to yourself a little bit and make sure that you rest enough doesn't mean that life becomes necessarily stagnant but uh, you know you express your affection or maybe the matters of the heart you want to keep inside or uh, behind closed doors or there could be a love affair that you don't want to you know make it pu make public just yet or you want to keep your personal and social contacts behind the scenes as well it's for some of you this could be a this could mean a secret love affair for sure uh but uh for the majority of you you just want to keep your you know your feelings uh you know and longings private for for the time being the Mercury is going to go retrograde in your second and then in your first house. So there's going to be some misunderstanding, you know, maybe some paperwork delays, some rethink, some reevaluation uh, going on uh, whilst Mercury is in Gemini till the 21st. And then Mercury will move into your first house. So that means you need to reassess um, not only your money, but your appearance issues as well, or maybe how you express yourself, maybe something you need to fix with regards to your image, your physical appearance, you know, uh, these sorts of issues. Now, Jupiter is going to enter Aries on the 11th of May, and this is going to take place in your 12th house. Now. Again, uh, this uh, just highlights uh, the further needs that, you know, you are wanting to do stuff behind the scenes. Uh, that area is definitely uh, will experience growth and expansion. But in my yearly videos, I talked about that quite a lot. Um, Jupiter is positive wherever it goes, but obviously uh, on the 12th house, uh, you might not experience uh, so much material, so much the material aspect of the expansion of Jupiter. So it could be more spiritual or it could be more so that, uh, you, you know, you will have like a guardian angel uh, behind the scenes who can save you in any situation. But as I said, I did talk about that in more detail in my yearly horoscope videos, um, both about Mercury retrograde and Jupiter in Aries. So please go back there and watch, uh, look for the timestamps and watch that part. Now on the 16th, there's going to be a total blood moon a lunar eclipse, and that is going to take place in your seventh house. 
This is not an easy uh, lunar eclipse. And also you need to check, do you have any important points, planets? Uh, is your ascendant fall, falling close to the 25th degree of Taurus? Because then you are even more highly affected. Because then that's going to be exactly opposite of the 25th degree of um scorpio where the eclipse is taking place and that means your descendant is going to be there so for some of you it can mean that uh, you know you may drift out of an emotionally empty partnership or severe ties abruptly but this has to come up in a um, different part of your horoscope chart as well you know, this needs to be confirmed somewhere else as well. Just this solar eclipse wouldn't, you know, end your relationship. But there is a chance for some of you this might happen. Now, an emotionally secure relationship, however, will encourage a major personal developments by a culmination or a revelation of a negative situation, which will put you on the path of uh, maybe releasing fear or letting go of sorrow or a negative habit, uh, a negative attachment issue. And these are all going to take place somewhere uh, with regards to your partner, business partner, or other people or clientele as well, if you are in, in a business, uh, you know, in, a, in that sort of business. It will be emotional and it will be a little bit painful. But as I said in the beginning of the video, you need to face those fears. You need to face those pains. You need to deal with them. And so, you know, it's going to be very sobering, somewhat depressing, but it will be felt more in the inside. Just remember that, uh, you know, this is the time when you are you know, need to take from one level of maturity to the next step. So, you know, some issues need to be dealt with, and that's going to be the soul, uh, lunar eclipse in Scorpio. The Mercury Kazemi is going to happen in the 21st, and that is the time when, you know, Mercury is going to be on the lap of the king or in the heart of the king, the sun. And uh, so Mercury, we know, is Hermes, the, pe uh, the messenger, not passenger, the messenger of the gods. And so an important message uh, could be coming to you from the gods uh, and you need to keep and stay open to be able to receive it, to be able to hear it. You know, it could happen in meditation or maybe as you turn the radio, some, somebody says an important sentence, you will feel it because you might have the chills as well. Now, this is going to happen, as I said, on the 21st, and it's going to happen in your second house. So maybe uh, this is connected to your finances. So maybe you receive some news with regards to your value system and your finances. Uh, and the exact time of the Mercury Kazemi is going to be 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. GMT time. So if you live somewhere else, uh, you need to uh, convert that to your time zone. Sun into Gemini on the 21st, and that is going to be your second house. So again, you are focusing on finances, okay, on values. Uh, you will put time and effort into everything you do because you want to become more practical since the primary need of this sign is value and security. Uh, this is the time when the personal finances and possessions receive maximum attention. So you need to pour your energy into your work, into your finances, and you might just be able to, you know, take your ideas to the bank. Now, on the 30th of the, of the month, the new moon in Gemini, that's going to be an amazing, and that's again, going to fortify, going to emphasize your finances. It's going to happen in your second house, so you need to set your intention. And uh, as I said, the new moon is exactly conjoins Aldebaran, the fixed royal star, and that the royal star that is eminently fortunate, uh, that portending riches and honors. And uh, it's also known as Archangel Michael, one of the guardian angels. So don't forget to set your intentions and, you know, 
aligned with the moon Aldebaran is very favorable for business, for honors, for credit. Uh, and now it's happening in your second house. So, you know, don't be shy to set your intentions quite high with that amazing, beautiful royal star. And that, that was it for me, Taurus. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Hey, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and press the subscribe button for even more videos on astrology.